For the third time in four years, Porch Croatia hosts another Archery World Cup stage. Following stage one in Santo Domingo in early April, the Porch event becomes a truly major stop in archery. Located in the heart of the west coast of Istria, Porch has become the leading center of Croatian tourism, developing from a small fishing village to an attractive tourist hub with a 2,000 year history from ancient Roman times. The streets of Porch continue to preserve their original architecture and numerous cultural and historical monuments. The Euphrasian Basilica, the best preserved monument of early Byzantine art with its distinctive mosaics dating to the 6th century. Around 260 archers from 40 countries registered for this second stage of the 2009 World Cup. Now let's go to the field of play with the qualifications, some very high scores, and some of the qualified parts of a new generation of archers. Does Italy continue to win? Who will win this second stage? Does the United States continue to lead as in Santo Domingo? Welcome to the Porridge Marina, where we'll have the finals. The new mixed team competition was the innovation of this year, and it started in Santo Domingo and continues here in Porridge. This was another big victory for Italy. Compound division action had Anastasia Anastasio of Italy and Sergio Pagni taking an early lead in their first end over Jamie Van Natta and the team of Braden Galantine of the United States, and they kept their two-point margin till the end for a victory of 156 to 154. Recurve action had Marco Galeazzo pairing with Natalia Valeva to win 149 to 145 against Rafael Dobrolewski and Justin Moschpanek of Poland. The the next mixed team competition will take place at the World Cup in Turkey. It's the compound women's bronze medal match between Andrea Vaihe of Germany and the Italian junior champion Anastasia Anastasio, who won the Neem European Indoor earlier this year. Andrea won the first end of this bronze medal match with 28 to 27. In the second end, it was the reverse, with Anastasia shooting 28 and Andrea shooting 27. Now, we're into the last three arrows of this match. There's Andrea with a 10, solid shooting. Anastasia needs to keep up the pressure because she's already two points behind. Nine points on that one. Andrea, another nine. Last arrows of the match, Andrea with a two-point advantage. Anastasia does exactly what she needs to do to put the pressure on, shoots a 10. But Andrea does not give up, finishing with 10 and victory. Final score, 112 to 110. A great bronze medal match and a great performance from Andrea Vaja of Germany. Now this guy here in green, 41-year-old Vladis Sagaskas, had a great week. He really performed well in the eliminations. Paul Titcher of Germany finding himself in the bronze medal match against the elder Vladis Sagaskas. In the first end, Vladis had shot all in the gold. Paul did the same, so 28 for each. Here we are going into the last end. Very close match. Vladis with a one-point advantage. Paul shoots a nine. Vladis just needs to keep it up with tens. Nine is enough to lead, but there's an eight. Opens the door for Paul. We have a tied score, final arrows coming up. And there it is, nine points for Vladis. So it is a shoot-off situation. Vladis Sagaskis and Paul Titcher have a shoot-off, single arrow, and that's what you want in a shoot-off. Dead center 10. Vladis needs to match it and fails to do so. The fairy tale of Vladis Sagaskis coming to an end with a bronze medal victory for Paul Titcher and a great performance looking ahead. Our recurve women's bronze medal match features a real star, not this woman, Suzanne Posner, who's relatively unknown, this woman, Baron Gershu, the 24-year-old from France, the world indoor champion, holder of the world indoor record, a tremendously accomplished shooter, a two-time Olympian. Now, at this stage, Baron Gershu is behind. Suzanne Posner turning out to be surprisingly good. She needs a five to, and there is a five to tie. What was that? You don't see fives too often at this level of competition. And it's a big open door for Baron Gershu, a new lease on life, as it were. Suzanne's going to need to shoot tens if she's going to try to keep the pressure up and beat Baron Gershu. With a final arrow, nine to win, and she does it. Ten points. Suzanne Posner coming out of virtually nowhere to take out the world indoor champion, Baron Gershu, 107 to 105. Well, this should be a fun match. That's Brady Ellison, who was a finalist at Turkey last year, against J.C. Valadon. Now, Jean-Charles won the Neem European Indoor earlier this year. He's off to a great start for the season. Now, here we are. We're into arrow number nine, and right now we've got J.C. Valadon in a position to lead Brady Ellison. 10-9 liner. And he takes advantage of it. Nine. Now, we've got ourselves a tied score. Each archer with a single arrow remaining. And Brady's going to need to dig deep and pull out a 10 to keep his hopes alive. He does it. 10 points, forcing a shoot off. So a tiebreaker is going to be needed. Not what you want in a tiebreak. 
That is also not what you want in a tie break. So here we go again. A pair of eights. That's better. A nine. JC's going to have to pull out a ten if he wants to break this tie. And there it is. Ten points for JC Valadon. Victory for the archer from France. I would tell young people just uh, to believe in themselves and uh, to work hard for what they do. I, I don't really believe in idols that I never met or something like that. I think it's more to a person than just television and what you see. I kind of like Jamie Vanada. She's a great archer. I would like to be like her one day. I'm doing good still now. Persistent. And I'm kind of hardworking, I'd say. I'm a perfectionist. And that is all, that's good, that's good, but also that is really bad. The one from Antalya last, last year, 2008, I, uh, I was third at that, that time. Um, I think that my only enemy is uh, probably myself. Well, I don't know about the enemy being herself, but Ivana Budin is going to have to battle one factor that Nikki Hunt doesn't have to battle in this compound individual gold medal match, and that is a very enthusiastic home crowd that is 100% pulling for Ivana. Now, that does add a lot of pressure to a shooter's performance. Let's see how things go as we start out this match. The weather just about perfect for high scores. Solid first shot for Ivana, but it's out the top. Eight points. Nikki Hunt with a nine to take an early lead. A lot of tension in Ivana's shot, just out of the ten ring. A smooth shot from Nikki Hunt, but not delivering the score. Eight points. Nikki has been working for the last few months on a strategy of turning each shot into an individual process with a finite time element. That means that from the moment that she starts the shot to the moment she completes the shot, everything happens in a sequence, and she isn't so much at the mercy of the elements or other outside factors because she can sort of package the shot mentally into a finite slice of time. And that can pay off under big-time tournament pressure like we've got here. Ivana's shot is a little more, well, let's call it uh, timing-wise, erratic. It isn't that she isn't a great shot. She certainly is. But... From shot to shot, you see differences in her timing and execution. Differences that, under heavy pressure, can lead to some faltering. Nine. Now, a pair of uh, nines and a ten for Ivana, giving her at the halfway mark 55 points on the board unofficially. After the official scoring, Nikki Hunt with a one-point lead. We're at the halfway mark in this gold medal match. The weather continuing to cooperate really well. Both ladies feeling the pressure, but dealing with it very well. Nine. Ivana with a good shot there. You saw the timing on it was short, relatively speaking, and smooth. Nikki with a very crisp action. Follow through looks good. Now watch the timing on this shot from Ivana. She's staying with the shot, but it's taking a little longer to break than perhaps she might prefer. You see a bit of shaking going on there. Yes, it does pay off with a 10. But it's not a comfortable feeling when the shot isn't breaking at the time you want it to. Meanwhile, Nikki Hunt with a very quick shot. You see what happens when it's shot in that way. This is as close as it gets right now. These two ladies are really going neck and neck. But definitely two styles being shown here. And that really is where that packaged process shot pays off for someone like Nikki Hunt. Because when you are able to put the shots into a finite time element, turn each shot into a process, that's the kind of performance you can see. Now, with three arrows to go, Nikki's got a two-point advantage and Ivana's got to dig deep. Don't want to do that. You do not want to give your opponent an opening this close to the end of a match. Ivana nearly takes full advantage of it, putting an arrow in the nine ring. Ten would have been better, but nine will do. Nine. Nikki just matches it. The score is tied, 103 up. And you could hear Ivana did not like that shot. 
She knew. She knew it wasn't going in the middle when she shot it well before it hit the target. All Nikki has to do is shoot a nine. Turns it into a process, and there it is. You saw her nod as she shot it. She knew exactly where it was going to go. Nikki Hunt making big progress in the last couple of years and bringing home the first gold medal for a woman for GBR in the World Cup Finals. This is going to be quite a match. This is Jorge Jimenez and Sergio Pani. Sergio coming out in front and uh, Jorge coming out in back there. And Jorge Jimenez had a meteoric rise to prominence in World Cup competition starting in 2006. He had finished in the end of the World Cup circuit with tremendous numbers came from basically nowhere. El Salvador isn't known for its archery program. And Jorge, in the process of becoming an archery hero at the World Cup, became a true archery hero in his home country. Everyone in his country knows who he is. He was a television star for a few months after his big World Cup successes, including the grand final in Dubai. It took a toll on him, though. It had an impact upon his mental game and his ability to shoot well. He also, at that time, decided that he was going to remake his physical being. Jorge weighed about 35 kilo more than he does right now. He worked hard to try to lose that weight to improve his image for the sport and for athletics in his home country. It paid off, but his performances for the last year were off. They were not what they were before, and Jorge had dealt with those demons, struggled with them. Now here he is in a World Cup final against Sergio Pani, a premium shooter, a finalist from the World Cup uh, Grand Finals in Lausanne last year, and winner of the Neem European Indoor, among many other events. After four arrows, it's only a one-point difference in favor of Sergio. Sergio is shooting smoothly. The weather conditions cooperative. Sergio makes it look easy. Jorge, he works out a little more. He actually has a somewhat different style with his trigger release. And under pressure, sometimes you see where Jorge is actually fighting with the tension in the bow and fighting with his release to make things go off smoothly. You'll actually see small motions, uh, almost a jerking motion, as Jorge starts to come through the shot. That's an indicator of a lot of tension and also maybe a bit of mental conflict, trying to make the shot go off in a manner that you want while struggling with the fact that maybe the sight's not dead center or perfectly still. Now, since uh, Jorge is behind right now, we're going to go ahead and start with him into this second half. He's got a two-point deficit to try to make up in the next six arrows. You see his uh, index finger on the trigger of this uh, type of release. It's not a full back tension, and you see what I was talking about. He actually had a bit of a flinch, and he let off the pressure and put the pressure back on. It paid off, shot a 10. But Sergio just makes it look easy. Actually, Sergio uses a similar type of release. It uses a index finger trigger. But the way that Sergio actuates it, it just is always smooth. However, you saw that little twist in Sergio's face? He knew that was going in the nine ring. He knows exactly where those arrows are going. And Jorge is coming on strong. So, after the first nine arrows, we are down to a single point differential. Jorge shoots first, he's behind by one point. Sergio needs to keep up the 10 count. There it is. Just two points shy of perfect is Sergio Pagni. Nice and crisp and smooth makes it look easy. Jorge. Nine points will win this one. So a big victory for the quiet and smooth man from Italy, Sergio Pagni. But this does mark a big comeback for Jorge Jimenez, who had basically scored not much in the past year. Jorge is on his way back. Jorge Jimenez with 116 to finish. Sergio Pagni only three points shy of perfect. I'm very happy because I've done also the results in the FITA tournament with 14 and 6. This is also my personal record and the Italian record for FITA. Also the gold in individual. It's just my third individual gold medal. And also I'm proud for Pia, my girlfriend, who arrived second in the individual round.
Il problema è cosa avevo fatto prima di Santo Domingo perché I was not on my best form because in the last two months I've had three other influences so not good for me. Also there are very bad days between the World Indoor Championship and the outdoor so I need more time to be in form for the 70 meters. And actually my uh, full name is Jayantha Talukta, but uh, everyone thinks that it's too long, so they all call me Jan. <laughs> uh, actually uh, my idol is uh, it's a cricket, uh, cricket sport, so in India, um, Sachin is my idol. Yamamoto from Japan, trying to win a gold medal in Olympics, and uh, that's my goal. A happy life. I want a happy life with my family. When I won the gold in the Croatia, I have many friends, and uh, in my batch also uh, Rahul Benerji. But to young people, I want to say that uh, everyone should do hard work so that uh, ev uh, everyone can win. Well, this promises to be an interesting match. Pia Carmen Leonetti is the girlfriend of Sergio Pagni, the man who has won the gold medal in the men's compound division. Pia Carmen, an accomplished recurve shooter, but not one that you'd expect to see if you were a betting person at a World Cup final. Zhao Lin of China, virtually unknown at this point, but China's had a huge surge in their internal archery program ever since the tremendous accomplishment of defeating a Korean archer in the finals at the Olympic Games that took place in Beijing last year. And Ms. Zhao is a product of that program. She'll shoot first, starting out the match. Conditions in the marina really excellent, and the first arrow out of the box is a 10. Usually, when we've seen Pia Carmen shooting in major events, they've been indoor events. It's the first time I can recall seeing her in a final in a world-class competition. So obviously, she's worked hard to get to this level, and it's going to be interesting to see how she performs under this pressure. Now, the first thing you notice with Pia Carmen's form is something just a little bit unusual, and that is that she's got almost a, a floating anchor. Now, her face and string, a bowstring, are coming into contact, losing contact, a little bit of a seesaw thing going on. It is unusual, particularly at this level of competition. You basically don't see people doing that. In the 1970s and 80s, you would occasionally see a few shooters with that style, but you just don't see it today at a high level. But Pia Carmen is making it work. Ms. Zhao with a more conventional style. One of the keys to the style that Zhao is showing is that there's a timing element involved here. She has a very consistent amount of timing. From the moment that she reaches full draw to the moment the shot cuts loose, it's a very predictable amount of time. Now sometimes that means that the sight's not where she wants it when the shot breaks, but generally, especially in high pressure situations, that style of shooting is going to pay off. Now after analysis of a couple of the liners that were shot by each of the ladies, it turns out that Pia Carmen had a one or rather two point advantage going into the second half. So Miss Zhao shooting first and she's going to need to rack up tens in order to overcome that two point disadvantage. Now, 10 from Zhao and a 10 from Pia Carmen Leonetti means that we're going to see uh, something spectacular, maybe, huh? This is looking good. Uh, not as good as she needed. That ties it up. And that is discipline and timing in action. Pia Carmen falling behind by 1.3 arrows to go after leading at the half by two. Still, this is quite a performance for Pia Carmen Leonetti. As I mentioned, not known as a top outdoor shooter, she is really hanging in there. But she knew going into that shot that that was not going to be a 10. I don't think it deserved the head shake that, that she gave it having a 9, but then again, I'm not shooting in the finals in this thing. Now, with one arrow to go for Pia Carmen and two arrows to go for Miss Zhao, it's still anyone's match, but Miss Zhao is the one with the two-point advantage. And that is what Pia Carmen didn't need. A 10 would have been very useful right at that point because it leaves Zhao with only needing a 7 to win. There it is. 
a two-point win for Ms. Zhao of China, looking tough and confident, the archer from China. But Pia Carmen Leonetti, well, a pleasant surprise, and she has really advanced a tremendous amount in the past season. We're looking forward to more in the season ahead. For the first place and the second place, they try to do the best in competition. It's just the result that's different. After the eight, I just shot three arrows, so nine arrows had to be shot. If I shot well, I had a chance to win. Now this match is going to be fun. We've got two premier shooters in this one. Marco Galeazzo, champion of the 2004 Olympic Games, Jayanta Talek Dar, a top competitor, a man who has finished first in several matches that he's had with Marco Galeazzo right here on this venue in Porich. So it is a sort of a rematch, a, a two-time rematch. This is the third meeting between these two. Both of those previous meetings were won by Mr. Talakdar. The archer from India shooting a solid shot, nine points. But no one makes it look easier than Marco Galeazzo. He just looks so relaxed when he shoots. Okay, maybe not the best start for Marco, but gosh, that shot looks nice. Uh, not exactly what you expect from an Olympic champion, and I'm not sure what he just said there, but I have a feeling it was something that uh, we might have had to censor if it were more clear. I can tell you from personal experience, when the pressure's on, no one shoots smoother than Marco Galeazzo. He uh, once dropped a 60 on me in an Olympic round, and uh, I'll tell you that that was quite memorable. Maybe not for Marco, but for me. Nine. A pair of nines. Six points is going to lead this for Jayanta Talakdar. You can't quite see it in all the TV shots, but Talakdar has got a little bit of a different style. He has a slight, what we call a sky draw. He actually draws the bow a little bit uh, above horizontal, and then he comes into the shot. Now, that's gotten him in trouble in the past. There's a FITA regulation that says that you cannot draw the bow above horizontal uh, past a certain amount, and that certain amount's more or less up to the judges. Gianta got himself disqualified in the Commonwealth Games a couple of years ago for repeatedly drawing his bow that way. He's moderated it since then, and he doesn't do the sky draw as, uh, as pronouncedly as he used to. It doesn't seem to have affected his ability to score, though. He's well ahead. Eight, nine, liner. Ten. That is just a smooth shot right there. Marco Galeazzo, textbook smoothness and grace under pressure. But Jayanta Talakdar definitely has the upper hand. He's got a two-point advantage right now. Marco responding in the only way he can, shooting solidly into the ten ring. All right, so it's a one-point differential, really anyone's gold medal right now with three arrows remaining. And it's going to be Marco Galeazzo shooting first for the final three arrows of the match. Ten points under really good conditions. You see that bit of sky draw there? That's what I was talking about. Nine. Tied score. So this is it. Down to the last two arrows from each shooter. Tied score. And Marco did not need an eight there. He needed something more in the gold. Will Janta capitalize? Nine. Oh, yeah. All right. There's a one-point lead for Janta. Last arrow for Marco. Nine, just out of the ten. ten would have been useful. Shot a nine. Not a bad shot. He's been grouping well all day. Nine, it is a ten. And that is a ten. An extremely decisive way to finish up a gold medal match. And an excellent performance from both shooters, but particularly from this man, Jayanta Talagdar, who is on the roll in the early season, 2009. And that is it for Porich in the second round of the 2009 Archery World Cup. Rankings, Ivana Budin is now number one. She's got four points up on Jamie Van Natta, who was eliminated uncharacteristically early in this particular competition. Olga Bosch and Brittany Laurenti following up. Sergio Pani, the number one seed, tied with Braden Galantine. Ditmar Trillis, former world champion, is third. Jorge Jimenez is back 
On the Road to Victory. Patrizio Hoffer right behind. Natalia Valeva, the legend from Italy, number one. China's Zhao Ling is second. Baron Jer Shu is third. Allison Williamson fourth. And Pia Carmen Leonetti and her teammate from Italy, Elena Tonetta, are down right underneath. Marco Galeazzo is number one right now. Jayanta Talakdar, Romain Giroul of France, who was not at this event. Crispin Duenas from Canada, also not at this event. Don't forget to catch up for all of the action from World Cup Archery on archery.tv on the internet. And we want you to join us for the next round in beautiful Antalya, Turkey. Till then, thanks for watching. Goodbye from Porridge, Croatia, and good shooting from all of us. <laughs>